Hello, everybody. Welcome to Connect Online 2020. Uh, I'd like to thank you to joining our session on the mainframe offload area. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do first is introduce our panelists today. So today we, we've got Vikrant Naramshi, who's a principal partner solution architect at Couchbase, along with Vagesh from Infosys, who's an open source database practice lead, and Nick Wallace, who is an ISV partner and manager over at Red Hat. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit today to start the session to talk about the trend in the marketplace. So one of the things that we have seen over the years is that there's been a lot of time and energy spent on mainframe applications uh, back in the 80s. Uh, when I first started, that's kind of where this gray hair all comes from. I was told the mainframe was dead. Uh, and to paraphrase Mark Twain, I, I'd like to say that, you know, the rumors of the mainframe demise are greatly exaggerated. You know, organizations have spent millions of dollars building and maintaining these systems on the mainframe, sometimes called legacy systems on the mainframe, not just for the back office, which is where some of these projects originally started, but also for the mission critical applications as they're running and doing things. The IT organizations are constantly under pressure to reduce costs, to make sure they can optimize these resources. And often they come to Couchbase for help. Now, I've seen Couchbase come to us in a number of projects where they're looking to offload or build kind of a coexistence or hybrid strategy where the mainframe is still gonna do the bulk of the processing work that it's always done, but they need some way of interacting with either the customer or the employees, or even in some cases, the devices on the edge that people are using to interact with the data so that they're not putting all that pressure on the mainframe as their needs and requirements grow and expand. In other places, they're trying to retire the mainframe system because they are looking to modernize their environments. And they come to Couchbase to actually provide those same capabilities that they're trying to use. Uh, this becomes very important as they're trying to reduce those costs of the mainframe, oftentimes by 50 to 70%. And these are the requirements that these organizations have to do. And let's not forget, the more we come up with better tools or new tools and modern tools, we see the resource pool dwindle for those people. Let's face it, there's a whole lot more people out there who can write in Java than are writing in COBOL nowadays. Uh, we're looking at vSAM environments and some of the other worlds that still existed back when I started in this place. So, so Steve Watts uh, from BMC actually wrote a blog a, little, uh, a couple of years ago that nearly three quarters of the Fortune 500 companies look to the mainframe to get their critical projects done. And we've got to try and help make those things work and try to help those out. So we've teamed up and we've kind of developed a, 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 a new better way uh, to handling these projects. We, we've teamed up to build this hybrid cloud strategy. So with that in mind, I, I'd like to ask Nick, you know, what are your views on why enterprises should look at a hybrid cloud strategy? Yeah, thanks, Art. I appreciate that and nice setup. I know that, you know, a lot of customers have been approaching both Couchbase and Red Hat in regards to, you know, uh, helping them guide them on those strategies. But before I get to the strategy for, you know, moving off a of mainframe, I believe it's important to first look at an overall hybrid or multi-cloud strategies that are foundational to how you're delivering business outcomes you're looking to achieve through application or mo data modernization initiatives. So from our perspective here at Red Hat, uh, and we have strong partnerships and deep integrations with a broad set spectrum of ISVs and technology partners, uh, we approach the industry by bringing together all these various ecosystem services uh, within, an, within an IT organization by, you know, partnering with companies that focus on security applications and networking and storage and messaging, DevOps, big data, AI, and even analytics. And so, you know, in, what also is included in there is, you know, database applications too that are both relational and non-relational like Couchbase being no equal, for example, and bringing those capabilities to market with a partner like Infosys, for example, you know, and like to be able to offer managed and host hosted services for those capabilities. Now, we understand that there's a diverse set of workloads on our platforms. 
and a great deal of automation that occurs as a benefit of that. But, so by working with these ISVs and, and the technology partners uh, in an open standards kind of way, we enable our customers to buy what is needed for their business to focus on so that they can focus on what they can, how they can differentiate uh, in their various routes to market and ultimately impacting our daily lives by enhancing the products and services that these companies provide us. So, um, you know, the specific products and services and consulting services for an open hybrid cloud is just, it's not a one size fits all, uh, but they do share a common te technological function and our foundation. And that's our open, our open platforms, our open source platforms, such as Red Hat Linux, and our Kubernetes platform, Red Hat OpenShift, complemented by our automation platform, Ansible. And so, um, you know, when it comes to designing and, and implementing a hybrid cloud strategy and architecting for it, whatever hardware runs your critical infrastructure and whatever cloud you want to deploy, you know, your modern applications in, one technology works everywhere, and that's Linux. It's, it's, why open source, it's, it's, it's why the open source operating system was able to revolutionize the data center operations and enable all the major public clouds to power you know, new cloud native initiatives. And so with Linux containers, um, they're, now preferred, they're now the preferred deployment option uh, for cloud native applications. And with that, you're able to achieve different architecture types of designs like microservices and um, being able to you know, easily plug into other systems through APIs. And now DevOps teams can make more frequent improvements to their cloud applications. And these are the building blocks of, of cloud native development. And the reasons why organizations increasingly look at, look to the cloud as they modernize their IT systems. But, you know, there is also data gravity concerns and sovereignty to con concerns to be aware of as well when it comes to um, now you have these stateless applications uh, running in containers. So this is, this is true for, for your customers who expect you to continuously de deliver a mix of different services for your teams and, and, and must remain, and they must maintain these, some workloads on premises, you know, because of those reasons while supporting cloud native application development. But deciding which public cloud and private cloud is, is right for you, um, each, each of these workloads is a complex issue and, and what you choose today won't always be the best solution for tomorrow. But, um, you know, if you want to evaluate a multi-cloud strategy in the future, for example, um, you know, and, and, and want to be able to perform these push deployments out to your network's edge, <laughs> it's important that your software solutions don't limit your future options. But how do you sustain long-term capability to bring together new clouds and, and, and these tools and integrations, especially when you can't predict the future needs? <clears throat> well, this, demand, this demands a consistent and flexible platform across your every environment you choose and services like integration to data analytics and more to enable different apps that you release. And so with that, you know, back to you, Art, I wanted to let you know that, you know, that's, that's how we approach these hybrid and uh, multi-cloud strategies first, before we get into the data modernization. <clears throat> Nick, that was great. Uh, you know, and, and recognizing that providing those building blocks is really what makes the journey really possible. Like, he's, you know, Infosys has been a strategic partner with Couchbase for a number of years, but you have an even longer history working with your customers uh, on these journeys uh, throughout uh, the, your, life, your life cycle. You know, going by that experience, can you illustrate what a typical mainframe offload project or journey looks like? Sure. Thanks, Art. So, um, what we have seen, um, uh, you know, over the years is that um, as you rightly said at the beginning of, of this talk that um, mainframes are here to stay. There is uh, no reason for us to believe that it, it would go away anytime soon. However, at the same time, we are seeing a number of clients who are looking at, uh, you know, things like peak MIPS uh, utilization um, that we really drive the cost for our customers in terms of what they pay for running their mainframes. So there are many clients who experience a peak uh, during the daytime um, and 
uh, that's driven by various workloads, including some uh, you know very significant read workloads that are coming from the distributed environments. Um, and um, that usually tends to increase the cost for our customers. And, and they uh, you know, come to us as a system integrator asking us, you know, how can you help us reduce this cost of, of running this mainframe and, and all the processes running within it? Uh, and these are you know, significantly business critical uh, workloads. So what we have observed as a pattern uh, is something that is uh, sometimes called as a stranglehold pattern. Um, where we are able to go in and take some of the non-critical read traffic initially to begin with and offload that in a near real time to Couchbase and redirect all the distributed traffic that is coming and hitting the mainframe to start reading from microservices running on OpenShift and accessing Couchbase and uh, you know delivering better performance for the uh, applications that are needing this data. So by you know, gradually moving the read traffic off of the mainframe, we have seen that you know, that has the strong ability to reduce the peak MIPS utilized uh, by the mainframe for those read traffic, uh, read transactions. And because we are able to do it in a near real time uh, scenario, there's really um, no significant lag between the data being present on the mainframe and it being available for the distributed applications to read from the microservices. So once we establish this pattern, um, it is then possible for the customer to look at the next stage of evolution of this uh, offload. Uh, for certain kinds of data, um, uh, for example, uh, if there is customer address being stored um, and retrieved uh, as part of this entire application, and we typically do not change customer address on a per second basis. So for such uh, kind of data, we are able to make Couchbase the source of truth so that all the update and um, you know, add activity actually hits the distributed Couchbase platform first, and then we sync that back to the mainframe. So now Couchbase and the microservices platform becomes the source of truth for that set of data. And we are able to evolve this um, journey depending on you know, the specific business case, um, depending on the specific data that is being stored to either significantly reduce uh, the work, uh, the load that is hitting the mainframe, um, or in extreme cases, um, switch off the mainframe itself, but that is very rare. Uh, there will always be a role and, and, and a place for the mainframe to, to exist and, and process certain data. Um, and, and depending on this um, uh, you know, journey, this uh, you know, could be accelerated. The read uh, offload itself is a very um, you know, rapid offload that can be achieved. And uh, depending on how quickly the customer wants to get off of the, uh, or reduce the workload on the mainframe, they're able to, over a period of you know, 18 months, one year, um, you know, achieve uh, the third state of um, you know, state where Couchbase handles most of the data and is a source of truth for a large amount of data in the organization and uh, then feeds the requisite data back to the mainframe. So that's the typical journey that we have seen. Um, and um, you know, together with uh, OpenShift, Couchbase, and the system integration services that Infosys provides, we are able to help our customers achieve their goals in terms of reducing the workload on the mainframe itself. Biggie, that, that is just so important that, you know, I'm, I'm always amazed at the experience and skills that Infosys can bring to these projects to really try and make them successful. You know, Vikrant, as I turn to you, uh, why do you think Couchbase is such a great fit and, and the journeys that were described by Vikrant? Uh, that's a great question, Art, uh, to check on alignment of Couchbase. Uh, there are two perspectives I would like to touch upon uh, to answer this question. Uh, it will help us understand uh, how well Couchbase uh, fits into the mainframe offload journey explained by Vagish and how it complements the hybrid cloud strategy put forth by uh, Nick. Uh, like Vagish mentioned, in uh, phase one of the journey, we target to offload the uh, reads of the mainframe uh, to reduce the peak MIPS consumption. 
Now, generally to offload the reads, a caching system comes into play uh, to support fast response time and scalability requirements of the modern digital systems. Uh, now, in the next stage of the journey, uh, you would need a modern database to play the role of a system of record and to help unlock the value of data that will actually be stored in it after it's moved off the mainframe. Couchbase has this unique ability of offering a fully managed inbuilt cache and a document style database. So in the first phase, you would leverage Couchbase as a cache. And for the second phase, you will leverage Couchbase as a system of record or a database. Now the key aspect to note here is Couchbase is performing two jobs for you of being a cache and a database. Uh, this gives cost savings because you're running one software system in place of two. So you get savings on multiple facets, be it starting off with your license costs, the total infrastructure needed, uh, the human team that is needed to kind of support two different systems. So you're better off doing one and the operational simplicity brings in the operational costs. Another perspective around this is since you're dealing with one system in place of two, uh, the application code that is actually going to be start talking to Couchbase as a cache and database is also going to be simplified uh, because it's going to just talk to one system rather than two. So your refactored code in the applications when you go through the offload journey is going to be a lot more simpler out there. The other aspect we need to consider here is how we move the existing data between the database that is sitting behind the mainframe over to Couchbase. Uh, now there are multiple ways you can do this, either using a batch-based approach or a near real-time sync-based approach, uh, depending on how recent uh, data you want to be available in your Couchbase cache, especially for the reads. Uh, now there are multiple tools around Couchbase that can help you uh, not only move this data, but also kind of remodel the data as it is being moved because you're moving them from a traditional database, which is an RDBMS or something older than that, like a VSAM files uh, out over to uh, Couchbase. <clears throat> you can leverage uh, ETL tools for batch based data movement and modeling. Now Couchbase is supported as a data source in most of the prominent ETL tools available in the market. Uh, now for a near real time uh, sync requirement, you could uh, opt in for a change data capture uh, tool, which is constantly listening uh, to the mainframe database for any changes that happen on that. It picks them up and pushes them out to a streaming platform. Uh, Couchbase with the help of its connectors that it has for most of the prominent streaming platforms out there in the market will pick up those changes from the streaming platform and kind of ingress into Couchbase. So in a nutshell, what I wanted to point out is you have a rich ecosystem of tools uh, that have support for Couchbase in the ecosystem uh, that can kind of help you with this data movement and the remodeling aspect. The uh, second perspective you know, uh, that I would like to bring up, which will show us how well Couchbase uh, supports the hybrid cloud strategy uh, as explained by Nick. You know, Couchbase was one of the first NoSQL databases to offer an autonomous operator uh, to support its deployments on Kubernetes and OpenShift based platforms and in turn support microservice based app deployment on hybrid platforms. Now this autonomous operator reduces your operational complexity in terms of provisioning, managing and maintaining your Couchbase cluster. It's pretty much running your CV, your Couchbase cluster in an autopilot mode. So with this offering, Couchbase aligns well with the hybrid cloud strategy being adopted by the enterprises while moving uh, workloads off the mainframe. Those were the two perspectives I wanted to put forth to demonstrate the alignment of Couchbase. Over to you, Art. Well, thanks, Vikrant, that was great. And obviously I couldn't agree more about the value of Couchbase, but, but Nick, with, with with that in mind, you know, what advantages do your customers experience using Couchbase with OpenShift in their hybrid cloud strategy? Yeah, so 
you know, that's all great points. And now what we want to talk about as well as when it comes to the strategy, how do we operationalize that and, and, and you know, for, for optimization. And the greatest benefit of a hybrid cloud strategy is the ability to choose the optimal solution for each task or workload. You know, these are going to be different workloads as well that need different types of data sets and different structures. So even if you aren't currently evaluating a hybrid cloud, it it can become a necessity for many organizations as they grow. For example, uh, you might use on-premises infrastructure to store sensitive data and public cloud services for application development. Or you might use multiple public cloud vendors to meet variety of local regulations or shift workloads from one provider to another based on pricing and on demand. Or you might want to invest in an edge computing strategy to distribute compute and storage power and, and, and get closer to the data sources that are within your network. So a consistent platform running portable workloads can enable these choices now. Um, and in the future, and same goes for a consistent data platform like Couchbase. And in order to standardize on it across the organizations and different lines of businesses, as well as, you know, have them running on OpenShift. So your operations and development and security teams can build and manage a full IT stack in a standard unified platform that works on bare metal, virtual machines, private clouds, public clouds, and even at the edge. And that's why containers and Kubernetes for databases and data analytics workloads work so well. Um, some of the benefits that you get from deploying these databases and you know, building a strategy around data analytics for these specific workloads on containers um, gives you more agility, meaning that you can deploy and manage your databases and data analytics workloads um, you know, with higher agility focused on the workload itself, which provides teams and th with the ability to respond quickly to problems or increase demand during peak time. And I can bring up an example of that here in a moment. But, you know, also another thing that you're able to gain too is scalability. Uh, you know, you get to, you know, power these workloads based on scale and your business demands and needs. And, you know, also achieve like dynamic scaling and auto scaling capabilities. But another thing too that you get with these workloads as well is portability. And, you know, one of the main things that you're able to achieve through portability is, you know, the concept of namespaces to know that uh, the persistent volumes in the data that is presented to these containerized workloads through a namespace is targeted towards a specific workload like e-commerce, for example. Um, but, you know, while this is definitely the case for most cloud based applications, there are plenty of, you know, non Java based Redis style applications out there that still need to, you know, move into the cloud. And, you know, thankfully, Couchbase has a caching layer, you know, as well in this in the platform. And then with the autonomous operator, you know, th you're able to achieve some um, things in the, you know, in this new era. Um, but, you know, these workloads still, they, they need a little extra attention uh, to make the transition, you know. Um, so in order to unlock the true potential of multi-cloud environment and that your cloud software needs to run on a diverse array of hardware, um, you know, by being able to shift these workloads on-prem and off-prem based on some of those needs and capabilities is, is, is big. And again, going back to the e-commerce example, you know, with OpenShift, we have multi-cluster management, meaning that uh, the OpenShift can run anywhere. And let's say if you have your e-commerce system containerized and the data sets presented to it, now you got a container registry on both public cloud and on-prem. When it comes time for Black Friday, and we know that it's probably going to be, you know, bigger this year with, you know, <laughs> limited availability and going to the stores. But now, you know, you're able to, um, you know, turn down your production infrastructure for e-commerce that's containerized running on OpenShift on-prem and then spin up since the containers are stateless and then Couchbase is bringing that state to it. Uh, since, you know, you guys are have designed it in such a way in which it's active, active, so your data is in sync. Now you're able to shift that workload from on-prem during low, you know, transactional times to off-prem, uh, you know, 
at a cost, but still in public cloud, you're able to get that infinite scale and then scale back down when needed. And then so you accommodate for both the customer's needs and for and for, uh, you know, the needs of the IT organization and ultimately, you know, for the business outcomes that they were looking for, you know, when it comes to mission critical workloads and, and revenue generating applications. <clears throat> so, um, you know, by OpenShift providing the application portability and Couchbase provides data portability combined, this provides you the, with the ability to achieve workload portability, to shift workloads between clouds when and where business demands it. So, you know, we're really starting to see a, a huge benefit there. Um, so thanks, Art. Back oh, to you. Oh, Nick, that was a great explanation. I really appreciate you taking the time to go through that. But again, one obstacle that we constantly see in, in they frame projects like this is the cost, and it tends to be slow. What, what is it that Infosys can actually offer to make these, and you talk about a one year or 18 month type project, make them fast and efficient? Sure. So what we have seen is, is there are two aspects to, uh, to any mainframe offload uh, journey and, and what our customers think through when, when they are planning such projects. One is, um, how, do I, how do I fund this? So a part of that answer we, we spoke about, we can't also spoke about, and I uh, alluded to it earlier as well, where we said that, you know, uh, the reduction that is achieved in the peak MIPS uh, utilization on the mainframe um, has the ability to, to really offset the cost of, of doing such a project quite significantly. Um, so that's one, you know, hurdle that, uh, you know, we help our clients uh, cross. By, by putting together a business case which uh, you know encompasses all these aspects of um, uh, why it makes business sense to offload uh, from the mainframe. Second is during the life cycle of the project itself, uh, we do deploy what we call as our art framework. This is accelerate, renew and transform framework um, that really helps us deploy the right um, accelerators and, and write interventions at different points in, in the program itself to ensure that, you know, we are able to um, both squeeze the timeline uh, as well as reduce the uh, effort and the cost uh, required and also improve the quality of, you know, what is getting delivered. So if you look at uh, any mainframe offload journey, uh, the first part uh, almost inevitably involves uh, analyzing and understanding the mainframe code. Um, uh, the data in of itself in the mainframe is very rarely uh, standalone. There is business logic that is attached to that data and that business logic is required in order to make sense of the data that is stored on the mainframe. So the first task at hand is to analyze the mainframe uh, logic so that when we do offload it to uh, uh, um, a Couchbase Plus, uh, open shift based microservices platform, the business rules that are encoded on the mainframe are carried forward. So in order to enable that task, we have a number of, um, you know, industry proven uh, tools that we bring to the table, uh, things like our uh, business rules extractor. This uh, enables us to um, analyze the legacy COBOL code um, that is present on the mainframe and to extract the specific business rules that are used in order to serve the, the read traffic. We are able to look at, um, uh, you know, what applications are actually using the data using, um, you know, tools like the SMF code analyzer. Uh, subsequent to having understood the mainframe part, next big task is the migration itself. So how do I convert my mainframe RDBMS DB2 data structure over to an efficient, JSON data model on the on the Couchbase side. So we have created a tool in collaboration with Couchbase um, called the Infosys Data Model Converter. Uh, this actually looks at data access patterns um, on the mainframe, the st data st structures in the mainframe, and suggests what is the most efficient way to model the JSON data model on the distributed side. Plus our tools uh, like IDSS, as, as we can't mention, you know, if, if batch um, refresh of Couchbase is appropriate for the use case. Uh, we are able to deploy our, our tools like IDSS, which um, efficiently move data from the mainframe over into um, the, the Couchbase site. And finally, coming to the distributed platform, which is running on Red Hat OpenShift, our flagship platform, which is the Infosys Cloud Native Development Platform, um, we have 
uh, you know worked with couchbase and with red hat very closely to to create this platform uh, which really allows us to create microservices and the entire environment to run these those microservices in an extremely accelerated fashion so we are able to reduce development effort by as much as 40% because we are able to provision uh, the environments the databases um, the 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 boilerplate code that is required to write the microservices um, as well as deploy couchbase using the operator framework um, and manage it on an ongoing basis so by using all these capabilities and our experience um, of having done this and and in in some respect more importantly our knowledge of customers business which allows us to really create all these solutions in a manner such that it it really enhances the business value that the customers it organization is able to deliver so by putting all these together uh, we we are really able to accelerate the whole journey of uh, mainframe offload quite significantly Wow, that that is fantastic. I, I have to say, I, I absolutely love the name of the Art framework. I, I think you should retain that forever. <laughs> I will be looking for you know some credit later on in the future. Uh, you know, Vikrant. With, with that said, you know, what does Couchbase, a, a, apart from being a database with an inherent cache, really do to support those modern digital initiatives? Uh, nice one, Art. Uh, the answer to this question will actually help me describe how Couchbase is uh, way more than a database. Uh, Couchbase is a platform uh, with uh, multiple capabilities over and above its uh, caching and document persistence capability we saw earlier. Now, let me describe a few of its capabilities, uh, keeping our mainframe offload context always in focus. Uh, Couchbase with its N1QL query language lets you query your operational data with an ANSI SQL compatible syntax. Uh, now with this, you are actually using a SQL-like query language to query the operational data sitting inside uh, Couchbase in a JSON-based data structure-based document. So you stand to gain here by not having to reskill your SQL developers, thereby giving you cost and time savings. So all your SQL developers uh, who are working on your apps, talking to the mainframe, or your legacy systems can actually quickly start writing app code on top of Couchbase as a database. Now, over and above this, uh, Couchbase uh, gives the application that is offloaded off the mainframe the ability to ask questions in various other ways uh, to its operational data that is persisted within it. Now, let's say if your application needs uh, a fuzzy search or an open text box or a full text search type of capability or if it needs to ask questions that span uh, a large amount of data you know the typical analytical type of questions or queries uh, then you would go about leveraging the couchbase's full text search service or the analytics service now the key aspect to keep in mind here is you're getting different you're getting these different ways uh, you can query your data uh, without having uh, to move it to another specialized software system uh, to handle your full text search queries or your analytics queries. Now imagine all the cost savings you can derive uh, with this layer consolidated platform around your operational data. So apart from cost savings, an enterprise stands to benefit on few other aspects uh, like reduced operational complexity because of the simplified software landscape uh, and another key aspect is all this you're running all these questions these queries on real-time data unlike the traditional space where you would do it on uh, data which is a few days or a week old depending on how often you batch it out through an etl process uh, so that's the kind of advantages you are getting through the layer consolidated platform now let's say uh, you need to access this data that you have unlocked from the mainframe over to Couchbase on your mobile based apps or your PDA based apps. So does Couchbase have an answer for it? Uh, you bet yes. Uh, using its uh, sync gateway and Couchbase Lite database offering, you can actually move your data that is sitting inside your Couchbase server database to the Couchbase mobile Lite database 
and keep both these data stores in sync uh, with your sync gateway. Uh, now, because you have your data locally stored on your Couchbase Lite database, on top of which your mobile apps sit, you are able to give a great customer experience on your mobile apps because your apps are accessing that data locally rather than actually doing a REST call over a microservice to the server-side database. Uh, that's one advantage you're getting to this. And now if you want to support any offline-based apps where the apps need to function independently and autonomously in uh, network zones where your internet connectivity is not great, then having this data locally stored in the Couchbase Lite database helps the app run autonomously and do the edits, changes, whatever they need on the app. And once they come into the internet strength zone, uh, the sync gateway kind of automatically syncs that data back uh, to your Couchbase server and gives you various options in terms of how it can manage any conflict resolution that comes about. So in a nutshell, Couchbase truly helps you in unlocking the data on the server side and right up to the edge. So with all these great capabilities that Couchbase has to offer, it really gives a bank for the buck for moving your workloads off your mainframe to Couchbase to support your digital initiatives. Over to you, Art. Uh, that was perfect. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I, I do see by the big clock on the wall that it looks like we're getting towards the end of our session. You know, a couple of things I'll just say to summarize some of the things that I've heard today. Uh, one, you know, OpenShift really provides with that that scalable, agile, portable environment. You're really that that critical component necessary to make these hybrid deployments actually possible. That that Infosys brings together their skills, their experience, their skills of resources to really make this work. And that, that wonderfully named art process really gives you the capability of helping the people stay on time and on budget. And obviously Couchbase, and you know, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we have that the integrated offerings that really does provide as, and I, I love the way you said that, bang for the buck to make sure that these projects are really capable and ready to work. You know, I, I do have one more thing that I'll offer before I kind of close for the session. You know, as I said earlier, you know, we're kind of working together uh, to, to build a, 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 the right way to help all of our customers try and be successful. And as part of that, we're actually offering a, a special promotion to our participants and uh, attendees in the Connect Online 2020. Uh, and as you can see from the screen, that this promotional offer includes not only a, an assessment of your mainframe offload, which is part of what uh, Nagish was talking about earlier, but also a workshop to help you understand kind of, you know, where are you today and, and how can you get to where, what does the future state need to look like? Well, what's that desired stage that you're trying to get to? As well as adding some consulting hours to help you actually build that minimal viable product so that you have at least a path to getting everything out into production. So hopefully this will be something that will be very useful to you. Uh, to take advantage of that, simply just send an email over to partners at couchbase.com. Uh, we'll make sure that we reach out to you and help you take advantage of that special offer. With that said, uh, I do want to thank all of our people today, uh, Vikrant, Ragish, uh, Nick, uh, as well as all of your the attendees who are listening to our session today. I hope this has been very helpful. And again, thank you very much, panelists, for your time and your expertise. Take thank care. You, thank you. Thanks, Couchbase. Thanks, Art.